Rebellious Studio presents the Mind Body Podcast with your host, Maria Angelova. Hey Rebels, welcome to your Mind Body Podcast, your Rebellious Podcast with me, your host, Maria. Your podcast about a strong body, calm mind, healing, and fully living. And it is my great pleasure today to welcome our guest, Mike Gibson, former NFL player turned mental advocate. Hello, Mike, and welcome. Hello, Maria. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, Mike. All right, we're going to start by you telling us three words that describe you and tell us a little bit of a story behind each word that describes you. Good. All right, here we go. Um, Three words that describe who I am. Yes. And the stories behind them. Yes. Um, uh, Humility. Uh, Humility is a big one for me. Uh, Without humility, I I wouldn't be here today. Um, Without my higher power showing me humility, um, I'd still be out there in the streets uh, and I'd still be struggling. I can almost guarantee that. Um, Number two, uh, passionate. Uh, You know, passionate in all facets of life, whether that's sports, athletics, um, my job, and, uh, you know, committed. I'm one of those, I'm not a very creative person, uh, but committed. If if you give me a task, if you give me something, or if there's something that I want, I do everything I can to get it. Um, It's been that way since I was a little kid in football um, to, uh, you know, even into my adult life, whether it's, uh, my recovery wasn't the first time I've been to treatment multiple, t- multiple times and I wasn't committed. And, uh, but I eventually got committed and I'm committed to it now. And it's something that I continue to uh, be committed to by helping other people. Um, Mike, you have a very interesting story, right? And a very interesting role behind you. Tell us a little bit more about, share your story with the vulnerability that I've heard it before. Um, of what has brought you to where you are today? Yeah, so uh, I'll go kind of go through my story really quick. And, um, you know, from childhood, I uh, had a blue collar family that was, that struggled a lot. Uh, Napa is a, a community of uh very wealthy people. And then there's a community of not so wealthy people and the family that I grew up in, right. They worked hard, but they didn't have uh, some of the blessings that others had. And uh, we had some stuff going on at home that really uh, turned me into the person that I am today. Um, I didn't always see it as that. Um, So growing up, I always felt different in a lot of ways and used other things to, um, to cover that up. And uh, what was the second part of your question regarding that? And I said, just the story of what, what, how you ended up where you are today. Right? Gotcha. Yeah, so uh, having gone to treatment on multiple occasions and not being vulnerable, uh, everybody would always ask, hey, how's everything going? Are you okay? Um, and I, yeah, I'm all right. And, um, you know, one of the things that I always tell people when, when you go to treatment uh, for mental health or substance abuse, they give you a feeling sheet and you go around and you do a process group and it'll have a smiley face and it'll have descriptive words for a smiley face. And I didn't know how to be vulnerable and I didn't know what that looked like. Um, so this stupid feeling sheet that I've been staring at for two years of going to treatment um, and finally getting it the last time and using that to be vulnerable with my family, my loved ones, my wife, um, and still to this day, uh, my sponsor, when I was going through the steps, uh, would have me use those words. And uh, every time I used the word, I had to describe why why I felt that way or why that situation made me feel that way. And that really helps me today when speaking with my family members, loved ones, even people that I talk to, um, you know, when people ask me today that I know genuinely care. And they ask me, they say, Hey, how are you feeling? And I, Oh, you know, I'm a little stressed, you know, and, and they know that they want to know why I have a way of describing it to them. Um, you know, if it's an average person walking down the street and how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. 
you know, but somebody who I know is going to be there for me, care for me, and, and really has a vested interest in how I'm feeling. Um, that feeling sheet still to this day helps me out. And, you know, mental health has become a hot topic nowadays. And a lot of people are dealing with it, substance abuses. Uh, um, I think vulnerability, the point of vulnerability you brought, it's, it's super important because many people are ashamed, feel bad, don't want to share how they're going to be viewed, how, you know, what people are going to think and so forth, all that stigma that goes along with mental health. Um, what do you tell to those people who are afraid to be vulnerable or afraid to be judged or ashamed to share, yet they struggle? Yeah, I think um, a lot, like, like I said earlier, you got to speak to the right people who have your best interest at heart, right? Um, a lot of the times, myself included, when I've had, when I, when I have shame and guilt about bringing up how I feel, it's because at some point in time in my life, I've had a bad experience with it, whether it's bringing it up to um, a friend or somebody who you think is a friend or um, to some, you know, you, you talk to somebody and, and you tell them how you feel and they kind of don't validate those feelings. Uh, you know, everybody's entitled to their feelings, right? I can't tell you how your feelings are in the way that you're feeling, right? And, and so whenever there's a situation, even in an argument or a discussion with my loved ones, you know, I'm like, well, you're entitled to those feelings. Like, I can't deny those feelings that you're having, you know? So what can I do to help that? Or what can I do to fix that? Um, so at some point in time, there's been uh, relationships or there's been a conversation where an individual was denied of their feelings. That's why they have that shame and that guilt. Um, so they're scared to be vulnerable with somebody because somebody shot them down before. Yeah. Um, you work now in the San Francisco, what is the name of the health center? Yeah. Uh, the, the health center of San Francisco. Uh, the um, Mental Health Center of San Diego. San Diego, San Francisco. Sorry. San Diego. <laughs> no, you're fine. Uh, California. Yes. <laughs> yes. The right state. Yes. Um, <laughs> so there's many facilities, right? And I would imagine for people who are dealing with issues, sometimes it's overwhelming. Do I call the 800 number? Do I call a center? Like, who do I go to? To a counselor, to a therapist? Do you have any advice? Like, who do people call? Does it really matter? Or is, is it more important to just pick up a place and make the phone call? Yeah, I mean, the, the first step is picking up the phone. Um, and at that point, just calling anybody. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's whether it's... Uh, you know, the suicide hotline, whether it's um, just a generalized hotline, pick up the phone and call somebody. Uh, you know, it's call a family member, call a loved one, like I said, that has your best interest at heart, um, who's not going to be judgmental. People call me all day long and and be, I'm un not judgmental because I've not only lived it, but I've seen it um, and I understand it and I respect it. Um, so pick up the phone call. Um you know, there's Google, there's so many avenues now, there's so many resources out there on the internet uh, that you can go online and, and, and look up. Uh, we have people that come to our facility from all around the country. Um, you know, we're one, we're in California, so that's not a bad thing, right? You know, in, in San Diego, it's 74 degrees outside right now. <laughs> so, um, but we're the, one of the only facilities in the country that has a, a a track for each individual mental health diagnosis. So when you're at our facility, you're going to be going to people who are struggling with uh, PTSD and you're going to be in groups with those people, um, bipolar, schizophrenia, like they have their own individual groups so that you can talk to somebody who's going through the same experience as you are. You know, it's, it's not that it's a bad thing, but if you're in a group with a bunch of people who are struggling with bipolar disorder and you struggle with depression, it's kind of hard to relate. Um, you're not going to understand what the person who has bipolar disorder is going through. Um, so we have an each individual's, uh, track for each mental health diagnosis. Um, and, uh, it seems to be working out for us and, you know, it's, it's the clients love it. So let's switch the topic from that to self-care. Yes. When you're dealing with mental health issues, substance abuse, and when you're in recovery, right? What do you say is the importance of mental health, self-care, and why, the, why is it so important? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's 
every day we go through, like our lives are so busy, right? And, and we go through a world of emotions on a daily basis, right? Happiness, sadness, depression, anxiety, um, you know, sometimes not every day, but there's a lot of emotions that go through the course of a day, right? Um, I think at the end of the day, it's important to process those emotions. Um, so like I said, whether, you know, whether that's turning the music off in your car on your way home from work, um, sitting in silence for 15 minutes, uh, you know, it's, I, I, one of my most important things is, um, don't bring your work home and don't bring your home to work. Uh, cause the, but if you end up mixing the two, then they both become, uh, become affected. Right. So I, I think it's important to find something that you love, surf, skateboard, ride a bike, um, you know, go to the, my, go to the gym. That's one of my favorite things I do first thing in the morning. Uh, first thing I do in the morning is make my bed, uh, because it's, if you make your bed, when you wake up, you've already completed a task for the day. You know, you've already started your day on a positive, uh, positive note, um, going to the gym, listening to music and, and hitting softballs off a of tee, uh, you know, find, find something that you love. Um, it doesn't have to be an hour long thing. It can be five, 10, 15 minutes, uh, of, of just you and focusing on you. Cause that's, what's important. That's what I tell people. It doesn't have to be self-care. It doesn't have to be an hour long, or it doesn't have to be X, Y, or Z, right? It could be. Yeah. And I think that's important, finding something that you enjoy, right? I might enjoy Pilates. You might enjoy softball. If I tell you, you have to do Pilates every day or vice versa, tell me I have to play softball. That might not work out so well for you, yeah. right? So yeah. You what brings you joy and what you know you will do because you enjoy it. Yeah, because it, it's an everyday thing, you know, yeah. and who wants to do something that they don't enjoy every single day? Yeah, there are plenty of those things that we have to do as yeah. adults that... Uh, <laughs> Let's find something that we don't have to do, but that we want to do, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, Mike, in your world, what does rebellious mean? Ooh. Uh, Anti-authority, right? Uh -huh. So whether that's, uh, whether that is, and, and I say that because like you're doing the opposite of what somebody wants you to do or what, what uh, you know, in, in I wasn't like the perfect saint when I was in treatment, right? So this is a rebellious move. You ready? A story. So we had this, uh, we had one TV for the facility and we only got to watch it at night. And we had, so we had uh, 24 people at our facility. Well, every night they would go to a meeting and one room got to stay back. So six people got to stay back and, and watch TV. And so very limited TV time. And I was up there for four months and I'd been there for about three months at this point. And it was my night to stay back. So, and it was, there's was Monday night football on. I was excited to watch it. Well, everybody was late getting down to the buses to go to the meeting. So they said, all right, no TV for the night. They took the TV out of the, uh, uh, from the, out of the wall and from the TV. And I'm like, like, why am I being punished? Because of what I <laughs> did. Like it wasn't even, my, I didn't even have to go down to the, the vans to go to the meeting. Well, I happened to know where there was an extra charger or an extra, uh, an extra plug for the TV. <laughs> so what I did was they ended up, it, 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 they're about, about 200 yards away from the bunkhouse that we had and then where the staff was. So I found this and I plugged it in and I'm sitting there watching Monday Night Football and Monday Night Football had ended. So I sat there for a good hour and a half without anybody bugging us. And uh, so I said, hey, I'm going to bed. Make sure you unplug the TV from the wall before we, if you see the lights from the van driving up here, just run, yank it out and whatever. Wait, they, they won't know. Yeah. And uh, I would go to bed no more than 10 minutes later. I, I hear somebody screaming and yelling and it's uh it's the person that was working at the time and he was so mad he yanks that cord out of the wall sends everybody to their rooms and uh the next day <laughs> oh yeah the next day the whole entire facility got put on blackout and uh <laughs> blackout means no tv no games um no phone calls for seven days oh yeah, 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 so so rebellious. That was, it was your rebellious, seriously yeah. rebellious thing that got you in trouble. Yes, yes. 
Yeah, you know, when I when I started the company, people told me that it's crazy to go from a corporate job to teaching Pilates. And I thought, I need a name that captures that, that you stay true to yourself and do whatever you want to because it's right for you. Yeah. And I wrote pages and pages of papers with company names. And I think I was watching a commercial of something and I was like, rebellious. I was like, I like that. It just resonated, you know? And the more I do what I do and the more I meet rebellious people who are true to themselves, you know, have gone through their journey to discovering their authentic self, um, the more excited I am about the name, you know, being yeah. rebellious, being a rebel. Everybody has a rebellious side. I do know that. Right. <laughs> you just got to get it out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's more fun on the rebellious side, not in the comfort box, yes. right? Yes, yes. All right, Mike, let's see. End this uh, on a high note with a favorite quote. Um. Yeah, there's so you talked about, you know, comfort right there. There's there's no growth in the comfort zone and there's no comfort in the growth zone. So get uncomfortable. You're going to grow, whether that's going to the gym. You know, you got to start somewhere. Um, you know, for me, it'd be going to Pilates. <laughs> there <we> go. <laughs> going to Pilates, you know, well, it's recording, Mike. You do. Yeah, I, I know it's going to make me better, but like is there comfort in it there's absolutely no comfort in the whole thing you know and then but i know it's going to make me better uh maybe not feel it right there but it's going to make me better in the long run uh whether that's for work whether that's putting yourself out there doing podcasts you know one thing i don't uh i don't like is hearing my voice hmm. so like or seeing my face you know i've done dozens of interviews on tv um dozens of radio shows um you know, and still to this day, I'm like, I just don't like hearing my voice, you know, but I know that going out there and helping people, uh, it's, it's bigger than me. Yeah. And I think that's, what's important, you know, yeah. so get out of that comfort zone and grow a little bit, you know, yeah. comfort does the body and mind good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, if people want to follow you, where do they find you? Yeah, so you can follow me on Instagram at mike.gibson, G-I-B, so mike.gibson69. Um, I'm also on Facebook. Uh, you can reach out to us uh, via website, mhcsandiego.com or healthyliferecovery.com. Uh, there's a 1-800 number that's on there. You can call that. Uh, you can reach out to me personally on Instagram or Facebook, and I would, uh, I'd love to help you out. Awesome. I appreciate your time, Mike. And yeah, thank, thank you, you, everybody listening. You guys make it a rebellious day and I'll talk to you soon. Can't get enough of those rebellious conversations? Do make sure you subscribe, like, and share with your friends.